Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to quickly and easily program a programmable six channel radio for differential thrust. Now, if you don't know what differential thrust is, we use it on twin engine airplanes a lot of times to get really effective yaw authority. We've done this on the Kraken, the Cruiser, and even lately the Sea Duck, and many planes to come in the future that we want to really get extreme performance on and extreme handling. For this setup, we're going to be showing you how to do it on the MZ-12. The thought process is the same for all transmitters with the mixes, but the MZ-12 is really resourceful, very easy to use. We also have a great tutorial on all the other functions that we did with Manny when he was down here. That will be linked below. Now for differential thrust, you're going to need a couple things. One thing is a six channel receiver. That's this right here. We're going to be using our GR-12L. A six channel transmitter with a minimum of four mixes. Those four mixes are going to be used to assign the channels and also mix the rudder with the throttle. So let's go ahead and make our connections first. You're going to see on our little board here diagram, the arrows pointing towards the nose, the direction of flight, and we have our right motor and our left motor. Of course, these two motors are connected by a power wire. We're going to be powering this simultaneously. But instead of wiring our two channels together and running to our throttle point, we're going to go ahead and run this to channel 6. So our right motor is going to plug into channel 6, and our left motor is going to plug into channel 5. We're not going to plug anything into the rudder channels or the throttle channel. Now if you have a rudder on your airplane like your cruiser or your guinea pig, feel free to go ahead and plug your rudder channel just as you were before, but nothing's going to go into your throttle channel. Now that we have our connections made, we're going to put our attention towards the transmitter. We're not going to power this up and of course we have our props off. At this point we're going to go ahead and make our mixes. I'm going to go ahead and turn the RF signal off. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to go over to free mix. Now, no matter what transmitter you're using, these mixes, as long as you can assign the channels, are going to be the same. So for mix one, we're going to go ahead and go to potentiometer, which is actually the throttle. And we're going to scroll over, and we're going to go to channel five. There we are. After mix one has been assigned, we're going to do the exact same process on mix number two. We're going to go down, once again selecting throttle, PT. But this time, when we go over to our second mix, we're not going to check channel 5. We're going to select channel 6. Just like that. Pressing enter will confirm it. And you can see every time we do this, now we have different features like rates and also the direction. We'll go back to that later. We're going to go down to mix 3. And this time, we're going to go ahead and select rudder. Hit enter. Cross over once. Back to 5. And for this case, I'm going to want to put this on a switch. So I'm going to go ahead and just go over right now. I'm going to select enter, and it's going to say push desired switch onto the position for on. Now we have a switch for one. I'm going to take the switch back up to the original position because I want this to have the same direction for both mix three and four. So now I'm going to go ahead and go down to mix four. I'm going to go to rudder as well again. Scroll over. And select channel 6. Now we're going to go over again and we're going to go ahead and select the switch, press this down, and as you can see both switches are opening and closing. If it was backwards all we need to do would be to go ahead and go back to that switch, reselect it, reposition the switch, and throw it down so both of them move simultaneously on and off. So basically, just to recap on this, what we're doing is we're mixing our throttle with channel 5 and our throttle with channel 6. That is mix 1 and 2. Mix 3 and 4 is mixing our rudder with channel 5 and our rudder with channel 6. That's why you need those four mixes, and that's why we don't go to the throttle port, because we're actually working on our auxiliary ports. The only downside is we're not going to be able to use channel 5 or 6 for things like gears or flaps. There are more complicated mixes that you can do, but not all radios can handle it. A very cool feature on the MZ-12, and for that matter, all the Grapner products that have a display, is I can press view anytime, and I can actually see what my controls are doing. Now, if you notice, rudder and throttle have no control over 5 and 6, and there's a very good reason for that. We're going to press escape one time, and at any time you want to go back and see what your actual servo monitor is doing, just press the view tab on your button here. All right. Now if we go all the way up to the very top mix and we press the arrow key, where you can do your reverse and travel adjustment, you're going to see this graph here. This graph is very useful. We're going to go ahead and press over until we highlight this. So go to travel, press enter, both zeros will be highlighted. We're going to move this to 100%. Now you're going to see there's a positive and negative. We want to go positive 100. 
There we are. We'll press enter. We'll go ahead and escape. But before we do, let's go ahead and show you what's happening on view. You can see now that number five, we actually gave the parameters and it's following exactly along with number one. Escape takes us back. One more time on escape. Let's go ahead and scroll down to number two. We're still on that arrow right there. So we'll press enter and do the exact same process again. Enter one more time. It's highlighted. Arrow up to 100% positive. So just to confirm that we're correct on our mixes, I'm gonna go ahead and press the view tab again. Now when I move my throttle, we're gonna see five and six both moving together. You wanna to make sure both these numbers are the exact same. Now that we're happy with that, we're gonna hit escape once, escape one more time, and escape one more time. Now we're back on our main mix screen. We're gonna go ahead and move down to M3. This one's gonna be just a little bit different. We're still on our arrow and we're still gonna be adjusting our travels, but this time we're gonna to go to a negative 100. You can see right now this is saying mix is off. That's because I assigned it to a switch. We're gonna go ahead and flip it down and it comes alive. I love this MZ12 because it's very intuitive and it's not gonna let you adjust things that aren't within its parameters. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter one time. This time we're gonna hit the down arrow to a negative 100%. Now, if you don't want as aggressive of differential thrust, you can go to negative 75%, negative 50%. I like negative 100% because it gives you the best possible uh, feel. You can always go into dual rates and actually adjust it through your rudder to get the feel that you want. So I tend to leave it just at 100%. Let's go ahead and go to view. And now you're gonna notice when I move my throttle, this is actually listening to my rudder now. I still have my throttle control and if I switch this off, it's only listening to the rudder here, but nothing on my throttle. So that's exactly what I want. Escape once, escape again. Now we're gonna go down to M4, mix number four. Press enter, activate our mix, enter one more time. This time we're gonna go positive 100. Very good, now we're gonna go ahead and hit view. What we should see now is a nice linear increase as we increase throttle, but what you're gonna notice is five and six work opposite to each other. This is a nice visual representation of what differential thrust is doing. Deactivate, only the rudder's working here, throttle stays linear. Looks good. Let's go ahead and escape two times. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and hook up our motors and test it out. Couple things before you proceed with mixing differential thrust. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your receiver is bound to your transmitter. And in some transmitters, especially like this MZ12, sometimes it comes default when you set up a new model in mode one. That's because originally in Germany, most pilots fly off of mode one. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that's mode two, and we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're bound. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and test out our motors. When you're doing this on the airplane, please make sure that the props are off. Sometimes if the props aren't off and something's reversed, it can jump to full throttle and it'll cause damage. All right, I like to do a nice clean power off, just cycle the power, let all the mixes take place. Don't know if it's necessary, but strongly recommend it. We're gonna power this off. And just like on any transmitter, always power your transmitter on first. This one's gonna immediately try to bind. You're gonna hear the telemetry link beeping. We're gonna connect it. And we're good to go. If you hear rapid beeps, you may need to do ESC calibration. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and power on our transmitter. You can hear the RF is trying to find the uh, receiver. We're gonna move our throttle all the way to the top. We're gonna power on. We're gonna listen for two beeps. All the way down. This is strongly recommended because it's gonna go ahead and initialize both ESCs with the exact same pulse width. So it, Bottom throttle's bottom, full throttle's full, and they both should fire up simultaneously. That's exactly what we want. Now, with our throttle mix off, you can see when I move the rudder, nothing happens. But I still have my throttle. With my mix on, I now have differential thrust. And just to recap, when you want differential thrust, if you want a yaw to the right, you need your left motor to spool up more. So I'm gonna go ahead and push my rudder stick to the right, and I'm gonna look at my left motor to spin up. Just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push my stick to the left and look for my right motor to spin up. Fantastic. 
We now have the ability to control our motors independently when we want differential thrust, but also for things like hand launching and basic flying where we don't want to bump it and have it kind of wiggle on us, we can go ahead and switch this off and fly like a conventional aircraft. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. I hope this episode helped you. Uh, playing with twin engines is a lot of fun. When you can program your throttle and interact with your rudder to give you differential thrust, it opens up a whole new world of maneuverability, ground effect, ground handling, and other cool things that you can do. Now, Every radio is a little bit different. We showed you on the MZ-12, but applying this thought process, reading your manual, will show you how to do your mixes to be able to properly program differential thrust. We'll see you next time.